Welcome to our continuing series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis, from the words of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. The Divine Presence, Part 1, from the Mother. Question. Mother, what is it that will help me always remember that I am living a spiritual life? Mother, the awareness of the Divine Presence in all things and always. The true spiritual life begins when one is in communion with the Divine in the psychic. When one is conscious of the Divine Presence in the psychic and in constant communion with the psychic. Then the spiritual life begins, not before, the true spiritual life. When one is united with one's psychic being and conscious of the Divine Presence and receives the impulses for one's action from this Divine Presence, and when the will has become a conscious collaborator with the divine will, that is the starting point. Before that, one may be an aspirant to the spiritual life, but one doesn't have a spiritual life. Only the love that is based on the divine presence can remain unmixed and present no obstacle to the sadhana. Sweet Mother, I would like to have the explanation of a sentence. Sri Aurobindo has said somewhere, materially you are nothing, spiritually you are everything. Mother, that means that it is the spirit the spiritual consciousness and the divine presence which give to life all its value. The same holds true for the individual whatever his material capacities and the material conditions in which he lives. His only worth is that of the divine presence and the spiritual consciousness in him. And so, from the point of view of the truth of things, a man who has no material possessions and no remarkable capacities or possibilities, but who is conscious of his psychic being and united with the divine in him, is infinitely greater than a ruler upon earth or a millionaire who possesses considerable material power but is unconscious of his psychic being. From the point of view of the truth, it is like that. This is what Sri Aurobindo means. No apparent and outer things have any true value. The only thing which is valuable is the divine consciousness and union with the Spirit. Sweet Mother, how can one feel the Divine Presence constantly? Why not? But how can one do it, Mother? But I am asking why one should not feel it. Instead of asking the question how to feel it, I ask the question, what do you do that you don't feel it? There is no reason not to feel the Divine Presence. Once you have felt it, even once, you should be capable of feeling it always, for it is there. It is a fact. It is only our ignorance which makes us unaware of it. But if we become conscious, why should we not always be conscious? Why forget something one has learnt? 
When one has had the experience, why forget it? It is simply a habit. That's all. You see, there is something which is a fact. That's to say, it is. But we are unaware of it and do not know it. But after we become conscious and know it, why should we still forget it? Does it make sense? It's quite simply because we are not convinced that once one has met the Divine, one can't forget Him anymore. We are, on the contrary, full of stupid ideas which say, Oh, yes, it's very well once like that, but the rest of the time it will be as usual. So there is no reason why it may not begin again. But if we know that we did not know something, we were ignorant, then the moment we have the knowledge, I am sincerely asking how one can manage to forget. One might not know something, that is a fact. There are countless things one doesn't know. But the moment one knows them, the minute one has the experience, how can one manage to forget? Within yourself you have the Divine Presence. You know nothing about it. For all kinds of reasons. But still the chief reason is that you are in a state of ignorance. Yet suddenly, by a clicking of circumstances, you become conscious of this Divine Presence. That is, you are before a fact. It is not imagination. It is a fact. It's something which exists. Then how do you manage to forget it once you have known it? It so happens that this is exactly what Sri Aurobindo has described in the chapter we have just read. It is that capacity of finding ananda in all things through identification with the one Divine Presence and a complete self-giving to that Presence. So I don't think I have much to add. What I could say would be a limitation or a diminution of the totality of this experience. After a silence. This consciousness has the capacity of changing everything into a perpetual ecstasy. For instead of seeing things in their discordant appearance, one now sees only the Divine Presence, the Divine Will. And every event, every element, every circumstance, every form changes into a way, a detail through which one can draw more intimately and profoundly closer to the Divine. Discordances disappear. Ugliness vanishes. There is now only the splendor of the Divine Presence in a love shining in all things. Namaste.